Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, my talk is going to segue really nicely with Carlos's. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about myself just to get started. Um, I am a nutritional neuroscientist. So what that means is that I study the effects of diet on neurological function. I study both neurological and psychiatric outcomes. I focus primarily on widespread chronic pain patients. They are very unique in that they have a really high symptom burden. So they do suffer from neurological and psychiatric symptoms, which I'll come back to in a second. Um, so I study something called excitotoxicity. And this is basically the overexcitation of neurons that causes dysfunction in the nervous system. The name comes from the fact that these uh, function through excitatory mechanisms, neurotransmitters, and that they can overexcite a neuron to the point that it dies. And that's where the name comes from. So we have excitotoxins that are present in the diet. Um, mainly, are, they come from food additives. Uh, so when we talk about ultra-processed foods that are high in food additives, we are talking a lot about foods that contain excitotoxins. There are, all, are also some foods that naturally contain these excitotoxins that also have to be avoided. The other side of the spectrum of what I do with my nutrition intervention research is that I focus on foods that are high in nutrients. There are specific micronutrients that are protective against this excitotoxicity. So I basically, I teach people where these nutrients are naturally found in food, not because a food is fortified, but really where they're found. Um, and I, I teach them how to follow a healthy whole food diet. So they're avoiding processed foods and they're also maximizing their intake of nutrients from healthy whole foods. This is an omnivorous dietary approach because some animal foods are actually very, very nutrient dense with nutrients that are important for neurological and brain function. Um, so that being said, you can imagine that ultra processed foods are a huge part of what I deal with in my research because they're a major source of these food additives. Um, and so just to give you a, a flavor for what I see in my research, um, so I see in chronic widespread pain patients, for example, I will put them on this healthy whole food diet where they're avoiding the excitotoxins and they're maximizing their nutrient intake. Not only do I see massive improvement in neurological symptoms, but I also see massive improvement in psychiatric uh, and mood issues. And, and this is fascinating because they're a group that has such widespread symptoms and we see improvements in everything. And, um, and so I, I think that this is um, an important point kind of to like add to what Carlos was just saying in his list of many, um, many of the diseases that we're seeing that are associated with ultra processed food intake. Neurological and psychiatric symptoms definitely fall into this class and are an important thing to consider. We know we have a, an increase in mental health issues that are happening, and um, some of this is linked to processed food intake. Um, I wanted to bring up today to make this part of the conversation because many of us think when we think of ultra processed food, we're going to think of junk food, right, that's in our environment. But I want to bring up an important point here is that in our move toward being more sustainable and environmentally friendly, we have a move where we're talking a lot about plant based diets. And now plants there are many plants that are very nutrient dense that are very important to form a basis for our diet. But what's happening is we have a lot of people who are moving toward veganism and they're thinking that this is better for their health and better for the environment. But what this has done is it has created a unique scenario where the food industry has responded to this and they are creating ultra processed foods, these fake foods that are made in labs that are vegan. And we have things like Beyond Burger for an example. And a lot of people are eating these and really feeling like this is something um, psychologically that makes them feel really good, right? They think, oh, I'm doing something good for me. I'm doing something good for the environment. And I think it's really important that we, we keep this as part of the conversation because I think we need to find a way to maximize human health while we're also taking care of the environment. And ultra processed foods, in my opinion, are not the way to do it. So um, I just wanted to give you one example. Uh, we are seeing on our college campus a huge rise in mental health concerns among primarily women who are becoming vegan. 
And they're doing this again, very altruistically, but we're seeing a massive decrease in their mental health along with this dietary change. It's because they're, they're um, causing certain micronutrient deficiencies to occur. And, and again, they feel good about what they're doing. So they don't realize that these ultra processed foods that they're consuming are not the best thing for human health. So I just wanted to throw that out there and make that part of the conversation as well, is that I hope we can talk about ways where, you know, we're really talking about maximizing what's good for the environment and, and the earth, but we're also talking about human health in that process as well. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much.